Hello, my name is Dr Carrie Lunan. I'm a GP in Edinburgh and I'm the current chair of the Royal College of GPs in Scotland. And I'm so sorry that we can't be together in person today for this conference and that we're having it virtually instead, such is the way of the world at the moment. So I've been reflecting over the last few months on what the COVID-19 pandemic has done for general practice, as it has done for so many other systems across the world. And it has both shone a spotlight on what makes our work so important, but also what makes it so fragile. In Scotland, the key priority areas that we have been campaigning for over the last few years include growing the GP workforce, building and strengthening the interfaces between primary and secondary care, developing support systems to improve doctor wellbeing, calling for a national public conversation on safe and sustainable use of the NHS and recognising the crucial role that general practice has to play in addressing health inequalities for some of our most vulnerable communities and resourcing teams to be able to do this. So it seems in many ways like we chose the right areas to focus on for a pandemic and all five of these areas have become even more urgent to address in the last seven months. Some have even managed to progress in unexpected ways, some silver linings from all of this. And a few more have been added along the way as general practice has had to adapt rapidly and remarkably to new ways of working. So the two just to briefly mention would be a renewed interest in primary care mental health. Of course, mental health is very much part bread and butter um, of what we do as GPs out in the community, but we have seen a huge increase in the demand for mental health support, both during the, the pandemic and as we move into the second wave. And so we've seen a renewed interest in what models of primary care mental health could look like to support the work of general practice. And the second, of course, is digital consulting with an interest in how do we embed and enable and support safe and effective and efficient remote consulting um, in our surgeries, whilst also maintaining the ability to see people face to face when that is safe to do so and when there is a clinical need. We've also needed to consider who are the groups that are excluded um, through digital consulting and how do we mitigate against that? And in the longer term, when this is all behind us, as a profession, we need to make sure that the pendulum swings back to the right balance between remote and face-to-face -face consulting. Digital has shown enormous advantages in the last few months in being able to maintain services that are accessible and safe to use, and it works really well for some conditions, for some patients and for some doctors. But I know that I and many colleagues that I have spoken to over the last few months miss the face-to-face -face consulting that feels very much part of being a GP and how that allows us to connect to patients in different ways, to practice realistic medicine, to offer opportunistic health care, to pick up on some of the more difficult stuff that patients struggle to discuss over the telephone or video. And we pride ourselves on being a relationship based specialty. So our future ways of working need to get that balance right. And I know that this is a key priority area for the college. And there's no doubt that it's tough out there at the moment being a GP. I think we all feel that. We all feel pretty exhausted and the work that we do is often hidden, under recognised and can feel pretty demoralising at times. There's no doubt in my mind that the work of general practice, which is a 24-7 specialty, has saved the NHS from the very worst excesses of COVID-19 with the extraordinary effort that we have seen out in the community over the last few months. And there's also no doubt in my mind that general practice has always been and will always be the backbone of a sustainable NHS. A flourishing and strong general practice is vital to future NHS sustainability. And being a GP has the potential to be the very best job in the world. It allows variety. It allows autonomy. It allows us to build our own teams and flex to the needs of our local communities. We have a level of independence that allows us to voice our concerns on behalf of our patients and act as advocates. So over the next few months, which will probably be the hardest in our careers, we need to look after each other. We need to be kind to each other. 
We need to get rest where and when we can. And you have my word that the college will continue to fight the corner of general practice and create the vision for a better future. I've always been proud to be a GP, but never more so than now. Thank you for listening.